Welcome to your sexual anatomy, chapter one. Within this chapter, we're gonna be covering the different body planes, the different regions uh, of the body along with CT and MRI. So the three main body planes within the body are axial, which is also called transverse, coronal, and sagittal. The fourth one is mainly for MRI scanning, which is the oblique plane, which is a combination of any of the top three. So it's a combination of axial and coronal, coronal and sagittal, sagittal and axial. You can combine it any different way to have an oblique plane. The oblique, oblique plane is mainly used in MRI and we scan to the anatomy so that we get a true sagittal anatomical sagittal or an anatomical coronal or whatever plane we are scanning in. As you can see from here, you can see the different planes cutting through top and bottom would be your axial, cutting into left and right halves is your sagittal, and cutting into the front and back half of the body would be your coronal plane. You can see in this first image here, this is an MRI. It's a sagittal T1 and we'll talk what T1, T2, all of that means at the end of this PowerPoint. So this is angled to the anatomy so we get a true sagittal plane of the knee. The next one down is MRI T1, and this is an axial plane or transverse as they have worded it. And the last one is a coronal T1 of the knee in true plane. So when we look at the abdomen, it's divided into four or nine quadrants. Normally we call this nine regions just to keep it simple. So within your four quadrants, you have your upper and lower halves. So we have the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, and your uh, left lower quadrant. And then you have your nine regions. Remember all of that? <laughs> it's just a refresher here to keep your mind going. The body is also broken down into ventral and dorsal. So you have your ventral and your dorsal here. And um, that helps a little bit if you remember the ventral and dorsal and the regions of the body so that when I explain to you that the spleen is in the you know, upper uh, left quadrant, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. So, this is just a good refresher here, the anatomy of the, uh, it's actually of the thoracic abdomen and pelvis there. So it starts to get busy in these slides. There's a lot of language and there's a lot of vessels. So what we'll do is we're gonna be covering each anatomical region of the body going through the book. So we're gonna be covering all of this. Make sure that you remember from um, your anatomy physiology class, the basics. We're going to take those basics and we're going to add to it and put it into the axial, coronal, sagittal, and oblique planes to image each organ or um, joint as needed. The vessels of the body here, um, it's overwhelming just looking at it. I'm sure in anatomy physiology it was overwhelming then also. So what we're going to do is we're going to be studying the vessels with the body part in which we're studying. So if we're studying the brain, we're gonna look at the vessels of the brain. We're studying the neck, we're gonna look at the vessels of the neck, the chest, the vessels of the chest. And in the chest, that's the part that gets really complicated is um, looking at all the vessels within the chest. Going into the abdomen, we're gonna do that in the abdomen, the pelvis, and then the upper and lower extremities. As you can see here, the upper extremities, there's a lot, and the lower extremities, there's a lot. So a lot of time is spent on the vessels of the body when we get to the extremities. So anatomical landmarks, we've talked about those in great detail in the positioning three. So we have the nasion, the cantheon, the goion, um, jugular notch, we have thyroid cartilage, you have your vertebral prominence. These are still important to remember as we move forward going into um, the areas of the body. You'll hear me refer to the different landmarks within the body. So here is an example of a cross-sectional image. This is first one here 
you can see the slice location where it's going through the pelvis, okay? And then it'll show you the image of the pelvis. So within that image, you're gonna be labeling all the anatomy within that area or if within that slice. So as you can see here, this has all been labeled for you. And um, this is within the pelvis. This one isn't giving you a cross-reference image like you have here. Um, not all of them will. Um, sometimes it's just moving down inferiorly so you can see where you're at. You see here this big organ is your liver, your stomach, and it's white. It has barium within it. This is your spleen here, and this is your uh, celiac coming off your aorta. This is your right crust. So here's your right side, your left side, your anterior, and your posterior. So you have your R, your L for your orientation to right to left, and you have your A and your P for orientation from anterior to posterior. Those are really, really important when you're in lab to look and see exactly where you're at. Um, it'll help ground you in looking at the images. So CT, the way CT works is the patient lays on the table and they go through the scanner. So what happens is it gives you like a loaf of bread here. So you can pull out any slice and take a look at it. So it does axial scanning only. So axial, which is also called transverse scanning. So within that, you can pull out one slice of bread and take a look at it. And that's what is displayed on the images um, when you look at this slice here. So you'll get this slice, which is taking one piece of that bread out and um, evaluating it. We can also take them and stack them together and merge them to give us a 3D or reconstructed image. So we'll go into that a little bit further as we go through this PowerPoint. So within CT, there's just layers of gray. So when we look here at the grayscale, you'll see white is the most dense and black is the least dense. It's just like an x-ray. So when you learn CT, you're going to learn that it is the same physics um, other than the receptor. Um, it's just x-ray radiation, so a photon. So we're looking at air is going to be black and bone is going to be white, just like on an x-ray. So bone is considered plus a thousand. Muscle and water are considered the neutral, the zero. That is the ground right there. So zero, it's based off of that. So bone is positive a thousand, air is negative a thousand. So fat is negative 200. As you remember from the scale with bone being the most dense, then muscle, fat, and air. It follows the same principles. So the difference between a voxel and a pixel, this is a kidney, oh I shouldn't say that, this is a kidney here that they're taking a, a chunk out of. You see the spine in another kidney, I don't know why it's rolled up the way it is, but okay. We'll pull out one piece, a whole section, the whole section is called a voxel. The front face, just the face alone, is called the pixel. So the higher the pixel, the better the detail is going to be, okay? That's the main thing. So the pixel is just the front face. The voxel is how deep that pixel goes. As you can see here, the pixel and the voxel, what happens is when we scan, we have a bunch of different um, shades, we'll say. Um, so this would be right here on the front would be your pixel and the whole length would be your voxel. So we can put the whole thing together and we can stack them and get volume rendered images, which I'm going to show you here. So we take one slice out here. So we can say, I only want one section of this. So if I scan an MRI of the brain, I'm going to scan this whole thing and I'm going to say, just give me this row. And it's going to pull it up and just give you that row. And so this is a sagittal T1 of the brain, MRI. So with using these pixels and voxels, using the voxels, we can go ahead and do volume rendering, VR, volume rendering, where we can take the stack and we can manipulate it in any different plane, or we can go by density and say only target density of a thousand. So then it'll show us bone. So 
um, if I say give me a density of negative a thousand it's only going to show me error which actually is useless so you wouldn't do that so if you want um, just muscle you're going to hit zero so that's what those numbers mean and how they correlate so you can see here um, they went dense because we have contrast in the aorta this is the aorta these are the kidneys so they did a range on this one a range so it wasn't just a thousand it was between probably uh, I don't know, zero and a thousand. And then they cut away the stuff that they did not want. We can manipulate it. So an MRI. MRI gets very confusing. Uh, when we're working in an MRI, there's many different sequences that we can run. Like in CT, it's about contrast and timing. Where MRI, it's about programming and programming to spin uh, photons the way that we want to spin them so and flipping them gives us different images here this is an axial of the brain okay so this is one slice of the brain all three of these are the same what this means here you can see the ventricles in the back here they are dark they are black they are black means that it's a t1 t1 when we go into seeing fluid any kind of fluid that is bright, we're looking at a T2 weighted image. So T1 fluid is dark. T2 weighting fluid is bright. This one here, oh my gosh, they're just trying to confuse you. This is a spin echo. Um, what that means, it's a combination of the two. So it's a proton density or a spin echo. That's a combination. It's in between a T1 and a T2. A T1 has a TR, and that's repetition time. It's backwards. It stands for TR, repetition time. So the repetition time, the TR, is going to be 400 to about 800 for a T1. That is going to give us dark fluid. If we're looking at a T2, we're going between 4,000 and about 8,000 max. So just keep math simple and just to keep it simple we're gonna say it's 4,000 to 8,000 for T2. T1 is 400 to 800. So in between that 800 to 4,000 we're looking at a proton density. So we're gonna take the TR and we're gonna put it if the doctor says he wants it more T1 weighted then we're gonna take it closer to the 800. If the doctor says, I want it more T2 weighted, we're going to take it and we're going to bring it up around 4,000. Okay, so that's how it works. So if we're going T1, 400, 800 TR, we're going to have dark fluid. If we're doing a T2 and we want the fluid really bright, we're going to go 4,000 to 8,000 uh, TR. And if we want something in between, we're going to compromise and we're going to say it's going to be between 800 and 4,000. So if you look at your TR on your images, it'll be listed on there. It'll help guide you and tell you what scan sequence you're looking at. The other area that I want to focus in on is your, um, your fat sat. So fat saturation is what fat sat stands for. So what that is is MRI sagittal T1. This is the T1. This is a breast. This is a sagittal breast. And you can see the fat on the breast is bright over here. Here, the fat on the breast is dark. When we fat sat, when I say, oh, that's fat satted, fat sat means the fat is dark. It's not bright, dark. So this is MRI sagittal T1. We don't mention fat sat. When we're talking about fat sat, we say MRI sagittal T1 fat sat. So this is an MRI sagittal T1 fat sat. So the fat is dark. We saturate it so it's dark. Okay, so that's your basics of um, MRI and CT. When you are actually in lab, I will be teaching you more about it. The big thing is um, T1 fluid is dark and it's 400 or 800 TR. T2 fluid is bright, it's 4,000 to 8,000 TR. Everything in between is like a proton density or a spin echo and um, closer to T1 it's going to be dark for your fluid. Closer to T2 is going to be brighter. Um, fat sat on MRI. When I say is it fat sat, you're going to look and see if the fat is dark. If the fat is dark, then yes, it's fat sat. Okay, I will see you in lab. Good luck.